elements of financial statements. The elements of financial statements constitute the core components of financial reporting, establishing a systematic framework essential for the accurate presentation of a company's financial position and operational performance. These elements, including assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expenses, are defined and measured to reflect the financial realities of an entity. This structured framework enables consistent reporting, facilitating comparability and reliability in financial analysis for stakeholders, such as investors, creditors, and regulatory authorities. Financial statements consist of 10 elements that show the amounts, claims, and changes to an organization's resources. The 10 elements of financial statements are assets, liabilities, equity, revenues, expenses, gains, losses, comprehensive income, investment by owners, distribution to owners. Assets. Assets are the resources that are owned or controlled by the business to receive something of value in the future. Assets include physical properties such as machinery and buildings, as well as monetary possessions such as cash and receivables. Cash is the most liquid form of assets. Businesses require cash to exchange assets, settle liabilities, and pay for expenses and dividends in the future. Other types of assets help businesses to generate cash inflows or minimize cash outflows in the future. For example, an investment property can generate rental income and sale proceeds in the future. A surveillance system at a warehouse can help a business in minimizing losses for theft in the future. Both are assets of the business because each provides something of value to the business in the future. Assets also include prepayments and advances that entitle a business to receive a service or product in the future. For example, if a business pays an agency in advance for creating an ad for its upcoming marketing campaign, it is considered an asset of the business as it will entitle to receive the advertising in the future. Liabilities Liabilities are businesses' obligations to deliver something of value to other people and organizations besides its owners. A simple example of a liability is a bank loan that obligates a business to pay interest and the principal amount of the borrowed loan. Another example of a liability is trade payables that arise when a business buys a product or service from a supplier on credit. Liabilities also include revenue received in advance because it obligates a business to deliver a service or product to its customer in the future. For example, if a video game publisher receives revenue from pre-order sales, the receipts are considered as liability of the business until the video game is shipped. Equity Equity is the amount of assets remaining in the business after subtracting its liabilities. It represents the part of the business belonging to its owners. For example, if a business has assets worth 100000 and liabilities of 60000 the amount of equity belonging to the owners equals 40000 Owner's equity in business increases by investment by owners, revenues, and gains. A decrease in owner's equity can be caused by distributions to owners, expenses, and losses. Revenues Revenue is the increase in net assets arising from the principal activities of the business. For example, Revenue of a florist is the sale proceeds from selling flowers. For a bank, revenue is the interest income that it earns by lending money to its clients. 
Revenue for a travel agency is the commission it makes from booking flights and tours. Revenue has the effect of increasing the amount of profit and net assets of the business. Expenses. Expenses are the cost of assets consumed in running the primary operations of a business. There are different types of expenses, such as salaries of employees, cost of electricity used in a factory, the cost of promoting a product, depreciation expense of a machine, and so on. Expenses reduce the net income and equity because they cost an immediate or expected outflow of assets from the business. Gains and losses. Gains and losses are the changes in net assets or equity resulting from peripheral or incidental transactions except those relating to the owners of a business. Like revenue and expenses, gains and losses are part of the comprehensive income. However, they are presented separately to indicate that they are not part of the business principal activities. Examples of transactions and events that can give rise to gains and losses include gain or loss on the disposal of a fixed asset, damages, fines, and penalties arising from a lawsuit. Loss from natural disasters. The distinction between revenue, gains, expenses, and losses varies according to the nature of business. For example, profit from the sale of a building owned by a restaurant will be considered as a gain. However, the same will be treated as revenue if the seller is an investment firm operating in the real estate sector. Comprehensive Income Comprehensive income is the total change in equity during an accounting period from all sources, excluding any owner's investments and distributions. It basically includes all revenues, gains, expenses, and losses during the period. The primary measure of the profitability of an enterprise is net income, which is calculated as the difference between revenues and expenses. Net income shows how much a business has earned in a period from its major ongoing operations. Comprehensive income is the combination of the net income and other comprehensive income that includes gains and losses from peripheral and incidental activities that a business infrequently engages in from time to time. Examples of transactions and events that are presented in other comprehensive income include gains and losses arising from foreign currency translations, derivative instruments, retirement benefit plans. Investment by owners. Investment by owners is the increase in net assets or equity caused by the transfer of something valuable from owners to a business in exchange for an ownership interest. Most investments by owners involve the transfer of cash or other assets to the business in exchange for a share of ownership. However, there are several types of transactions that are classified as an investment by owners. Examples of owner investment include cash invested by partners in a partnership firm, subscription of the shares of a company by its shareholders, issuing shares of a company to its employees in compensation for their services, conversion of convertible bonds into share capital. Ownership of a business often exchanges hands from one owner to another. A transaction between owners is not considered as an investment by owners because it does not involve the transfer of any resource to the business entity. Distribution to owners Distribution to owners is any decrease in the ownership interest caused by the transfer of something valuable 
from the business to its owners, such as assets, services, or the undertaking of liabilities. Distributing profits to business owners, partners, or stockholders depends largely on the type of business structure, sole proprietorship, partnership, or corporation. Each has distinct procedures and considerations regarding profit sharing. Sole proprietorship. In a sole proprietorship, the business and the owner are considered one entity. So, all profits generated by the business are solely the owner's. When the business earns a profit, the sole proprietor can freely decide how much to take out for personal use or how much to retain in the business. These withdrawals are often informal and referred to as owner's drawings or withdrawals. Since there's no requirement for formal dividends or complex approvals, a sole proprietor can adjust withdrawals based on the business needs and personal goals. Partnership a partnership is a separate legal entity from its partners, but partners share ownership and are entitled to a portion of the profits according to a partnership agreement. This agreement typically specifies each partner's share, often based on the capital they contributed or negotiated split. The distribution to partners, known as a partner's drawing or withdrawals, reflect their agreed share of the profits. These drawings allow partners to access their portion of the profits while retaining enough in the business for operations and growth. In a general partnership, this profit-sharing process tends to be straightforward, though partnerships often hold regular discussions or reviews to ensure the distribution remains fair and aligns with the partnership's goals. Corporation In a corporate setting, particularly with stock corporations, Profit distribution is more formal and structured. The board of directors generally has the authority to declare dividends, which are the primary means of distributing profits to stockholders. The board considers the company's financial health, future growth plans, and current cash flow before deciding on dividend payments. If the company is performing well and has sufficient funds, the board may declare either a cash dividend or a stock dividend. Cash dividends. Cash dividends are payouts distributed directly to shareholders. This type of dividend is common as it provides immediate financial returns to the shareholders. Cash dividends are typically paid out on a per share basis, meaning each shareholder receives an amount proportional to the number of shares he owns. Stock dividends. In some cases, the corporation may opt for stock dividends, where shareholders receive additional shares instead of cash. This approach is often used when the company prefers to reinvest cash into growth initiatives or retain liquidity. Stock dividends increase the shareholders' equity in the company without an immediate cash payout. Corporations need to ensure that dividends are paid fairly with transparency and in line with the corporate governance standards. Family-owned corporation may have more flexibility in terms of frequency and timing of dividends, although they still follow general principles of corporate governance.